Hello everyone. Today we will begin Roman art. It is one of the most prolific periods in art history of mankind. Let us understand what shall our objectives be in this chapter. Acquaint about the significance of Roman art and architecture. Know and appreciate the significance of the historical and cultural context of ancient Roman artifacts. Learn and understand the relationship between the arts and the times during which they were created. Understand the Roman point of view on art. Gain ability to interpret non-literary evidence such as art objects, monuments and inscriptions. So what are we learning in this chapter? Well, it is the following. Introduction. History. Contribution of Roman culture to the world. Roman mythology. Differences between Greek and Roman art. Roman writers on art. Let me introduce the geography and the space of Rome. The legacy of Rome and Roman Empire lasted for about 500 years. The city and the empire was a melting pot. The political genius of Rome was in its ability to encompass, govern and assimilate cultures very different from its own. The laws of the Romans also allowed for people from far off regions to take the citizenship of Rome. Even though they had never been to Rome or were not Romans. Characterized by an autocratic form of government, headed by an emperor, and large territorial holdings around the Mediterranean Sea in Europe, Africa, Middle East and Asia Minor. The Roman Empire had its capital in Rome, a great city, the Caput Mundi, had or capital of the world, signified its position as the hub of world power. We must now talk about the history of the times. When the Etruscan civilization was flourishing, the Latin speaking inhabitants of Roman began to develop into a formidable power. For a while, kings of Etruscan lineage ruled them, but in 509 BC, the Romans overthrew them and formed a republic centered in Rome. The Etruscans themselves were absorbed by the Roman Republic at the end of the 3rd century BC, by which time Rome had steadily expanded its territory in many directions. For the next five centuries, Rome was ruled by two consuls, a senate and an assembly. The consuls were elected every year and shared the military and judicial authority for the former kings. The Senate was composed of former magistrates. The assembly consisted of citizens. At its greatest extent, in the early 2nd century AD, the Roman Empire reached from the Euphrates River in southwest Asia to Scotland, it ringed at Mediterranean Sea, Mare Nostrum or Our Sea, the Romans called it. Those who were conquered by the Romans gradually assimilated Roman legal, administrative, cultural structures that endured for some five centuries and in the Eastern Mediterranean until the 15th century AD and left a lasting mark 
on the civilization that emerged in Europe. Everywhere the Roman went, they took their culture with them, particularly their laws, their religion, and the Latin language. The Republic lasted until 27 BC, when Octavian later took the title Augustus, became the first emperor. The term Augustus was originally a religious title meaning revered, but it came to mean he who is supreme. For the next 300 years, Rome was ruled by a succession of emperors. In AD 330, Constantine established an eastern capital of the Roman Empire in Byzantium which he renamed Constantinople, now Istanbul, in modern Turkey. After this period, the Western Empire, which had kept Rome as its capital, declined and was finally overrun by the Goths in 476 AD. Let us look at the chronology now. Roman culture has contributed immensely to the world in a variety of ways – politics, economics, philosophy, technology, art, sculpture, architecture, etc. Let us look at its contribution in great detail. The Roman Republic left a form of government similar to the democracy of Greece, but with the ability to govern large bodies of people. Rome used a representation method where senators represented groups of people, allowing for a democracy encompassing a very large population. This form of government would later prove vital to the structure of the government of the United States of America and many other countries. The Republic gave the people of a large population a say in political issues, leaving a priceless gift to the Western world. Unification, Rome's magnificent size and its unified nature allowed for the spreading of ideas throughout Western civilization. Because of this unification of Rome, information moved like it had never before. Rome was a melting pot of cultures and customs, bringing together countless ideas to a place where these ideas could quickly be passed around like never before in history. Ideas ran rampant through the Roman Empire, mixing cultures and societies. The military fronts of the Roman Empire formed new cities, furthering cultural diffusion by Romanizing much of the Roman front, therefore leaving a permanent Roman mark. Though not Rome's intention, it allowed Christianity to spread and flourish throughout Western civilization. Rome, unified under one government, made possible the passing of information very quickly, thus greatly assisting the spread of Christianity. Even in the wake of persecution from such rulers as Diocletian and Maximian. Christianity continued to grow in strength. The Romans built excellent systems of paved roads over 50,000 miles 
by 280, primarily in the service of military conquest. These Roman roads, many of which are still in use today, were constructed with a combination of dirt, gravel, and bricks made from granite and hardened volcanic lava, with strict adherence to standards. These roads promoted trade and commerce and Roman style. Customs and culture were adopted. Welfare. Ancient Roman was the wellspring for many modern government programs, including measures that subsidized food, education, and other expenses for the needy. These entitlement programs date back to 122 BC, when the Tribune Gaius Gracchus instituted the Fumentria, a law that ordered Rome's government to supply its citizens with allotments of cheaply priced gain. These generous handouts helped Roman emperors win favor with the public, but some historians have argued that they also contributed to Roman's economic decline. The growth of Roman Empire spread Latin language throughout Europe. The Latin language became predominant in the Western Empire and became the foundation for Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian, and Romanian language. Latin also influenced other languages used in Western civilization in so far as the words used are concerned. For example, English, because Latin was the language of the Roman Catholic Church and academics, it naturally influenced other languages, even the non-Roman languages too. Law. Roman's most lasting and great contribution to the Western civilization is the law. With the expansion of the Roman Empire, the Romans came to accept that laws should be fair and equal to every person, whether wealthy or poor. The principles of justice were based on common sense and practical ideas. It is the Roman legacy that every person had the right to receive equal treatment under the law. Every person was believed innocent unless proven guilty. These principles are the foundations of many legal systems across the world now. Battlefield Surgery The Romans invented many surgical tools and pioneered the use of caesarean section. But their most valuable contribution to medicine came on the battlefield. Under the leadership of Augustus, they established a military medical corps that was one of the first dedicated field surgery unit. These specially trained medics saved countless lives through the use of Roman medical innovations like hemostatic and tourniquets and arterial surgical clamps to curb the blood loss. Roman field doctors also performed physicals on new recruits and helped stem the spread of disease by overseeing sanitation in military camps. They were even known to disinfect instruments in hot water before use, pioneering a form of antiseptic surgery that was not fully embraced until the 19th century. The Julian Calendar
when Julius Caesar and the astronomer Sosigenus instituted the Julian system of align the calendar with the solar year, Caesar lengthened the number of days in a year from 355 to the now familiar 365 and eventually included the 12 months as we know them today. The Julian calendar was almost perfect, but it miscalculated solar year by 11 minutes. These few minutes ultimately threw the calendar off by several days. This led to the adoption of the nearly identical Gregorian calendar in 1582 which fixed the discrepancy by altering the schedule of leap year. Roman arches Arches have existed for roughly 4,000 years, but the ancient Romans were the first to effectively harness their power in the construction of bridges, monuments and buildings. The ingenious design of the arch allowed the weight of buildings to be evenly distributed along the various supports, preventing massive Roman structure like the Colosseum from crumbling under their own weight. Bound books. The Romans created the Codex, a stack of bound pages that is recognized as the earliest incarnation of the book. The first codex were made of bound wax tablets, but these were later replaced by animal skin parchment that more clearly resembled pages. Early Christians became some of the first to adopt the new technology, using it extensively to produce copies of the Bible newspapers the romans were known to contribute to public discourse through the use of official texts detailing military legal and civil issues known as acta de Ruma or daily acts these early newspapers were written on metal or stone and then posted in heavily trafficked areas like the Roman Forum. Concrete. Many ancient Roman structures like the Pantheon, the Colosseum and Roman Forum are still standing today thanks to the development of Roman cement and concrete. The Romans first began building with concrete over 2,100 years ago and used it throughout the Mediterranean basin in everything from aqueducts and buildings to bridges and monuments. Aqueducts. All the amenities that the Roman enjoyed, public toilets, underground sewage systems, fountains and ornate public baths were only possible because of the Roman aqueduct. First developed around 312 BC, these engineering marvels used gravity to transport water along stone lead and concrete pipelines 
and into city centers. Equiducts liberated Roman cities from a reliance on nearby water supplies and proved priceless in promoting public health and sanitation. While the Romans did not invent the aqueduct, primitive canals for irrigation and water transport existed earlier in Egypt, Assyria and Babylon. They used their mastery of civil engineering to perfect the process. Let us look at some features of Roman art. Many characteristics of Roman art have their origins in the art of the Etrical. The Romans predecessor as the dominant culture of Italy. Roman art absorbed this Etruscan style of temple architecture, sculpture, portraiture, and wall painting. Rome was also deeply influenced by the art of Hellenistic world, which had spread to southern Italy and Sicily through the Greek colonies there. Original Greek statues were copied by Roman artists, though usually in marble rather than bronze, and removed from their original context. The portrait bus became the popular form, tending to be more realist than Greek portraiture. However, Roman art also had its own original contributions compared with Greek architecture. Roman was more secular and utilitarian and showed an interest in grandeur and scale, for example, in Colosseum and public paths in Rome. The Romans also developed the use of arc, the vault and the dome. Triumphal arch was another Roman invention that was revived in the Renaissance and stands as an important example of Roman civic and monumental architecture. The triumphal arch used relief sculpture and inscription to carry its historic and commemorative messages. And this narrative technique decorated the entire surface of the commemorative Trajan's column. Relief sculpture was also used for funerary art. The Romans developed the use of mosaic decoration from the Greek example and with wall painting it became an important aspect of patrician domestic decoration. The best surviving examples being from Pompeii and Herculean. Wall painting showed an interest in landscape and illustration of scenes from myths and literature. The decorative arts included fine silver and glassware, such as the Portland vase and jewelry of Ambed, precious gem and gold. Alongside bath, basilicas, 
एम्पीथिएटर्स वेयर हाउसेज फोरम्स सर्कसेस स्टेडियम्स एंड अदर यूटिलिटेरियन बिल्डिंग्स वर बिल्ट The Romans excelled in pictorial arts. They were highly eclectic elements from Etruscans, Greeks and Egyptians. But the Romans developed the atmospheric treatment of space in the illusionistic style of the wall painting at Pompeii. In contrast to the two-dimensionality, this interest in the background of Greek painting Since the Romans produced a lot of literature as well, it is imperative to see if they wrote on art. Well, they did. Only one book devoted specifically to architecture and the art survives from antiquity. All our other written sources consist of digressions and insertions in works on other subjects that one book the 10 books on architecture by vitruvius circa 80 to circa 15 bce however is valuable written for augustus in the first century bce it is a practical handbook for builders that discusses such things as laying out cities sitting buildings and using the greek architectural orders vitruvius argued for appropriateness and rationality in architecture and he also made significant contribution to art theory including studies on proportion pliny the elder circa 23 and 79 ce wrote a vast encyclopedia of facts histories and observations known as naturalist historia the natural history that often included discussions of art and architecture pliny occasionally used works of art to make his points for example citing sculpture within his essays on stone and metals Pliny's scientific turn to mind led to his death for his for he was overcome while observing the eruption of mount vesuvius that buried pompey his nephew pliny the younger circa 61 to 113 ce a voluminous letter writer added to our knowledge of roman domestic architecture with its meticulous description of villas and gardens valuable bits of information can also be found in books by travelers and historians posenius a second century ad greek traveler wrote descriptions that are basic sources on greek art and artist flavius josephus circa 37 to 100 ce a historian of the flavian wrote in his jewish wars a description of the trump of titus that includes the treasure looted from temple of solomon in jerusalem lastly let us compare roman art with greek art 
there were important differences between the Greek and Roman approaches to history, which in some sense parallel the differences in their views of art. Greek art was a model throughout the Mediterranean and provided a classical ideal. In Rome, art had its local styles, but the Romans continued to be influenced by Greek sculpture, painting and architecture. They identified their own gods with Greek gods and adopted Greek iconography. Although Greek monumental paintings have survived only in fragments, they too influenced Roman painters, especially in the Hellenistic period. Greek art tended towards idealization, but Roman art was typically commemorative, narrative and based on history rather than myth. As in the Hellenistic style, Roman portraits sought to preserve the features of their subjects. They went even further in the pursuit of specific likeness, making wax death masks and copying them in marble. The purpose of Roman portraiture was genealogical, connecting present with past, just as Aeneas connected the origin of Rome with the fall of Troy, and through his mother, Venus with the goats. The Roman interest in preserving family lineage by which individuals trace their descent. Portraits, whether sculpture or painting, thus had a twofold function. They both preserved the person's image and contributed to the history of the family. Similarly, Roman reliefs usually depicted historical events commemorating the actions of a particular individual. Most commemorative reliefs adorned architectural works and it was in architecture that the Romans were most innovative.